Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. This is another one of those scrap to scene types of videos and you can't start off with anything uh, too much uh, worse, I guess you can say, than this piece of scrap. It was a demonstration piece showing, I don't know, I think the blending of a couple different types of ink where they're transparent. That's that little smudge of yellow and blue right in the middle of the scene there. And then those additional impressions of the reeds large um, to show people how much uh, impression pressure to use when using that. I didn't remember if I stamped those out in a dye-based ink or if it was pigment, but I thought I would incorporate those into the scene and we're going to try that here. My general concept for this piece especially with those dark reeds like that, was to do some sort of kind of looking up at the sky type of thing from the ground with a bunch of surrounding foliage because I thought I would have to use some pretty dark foliage to get rid of those um, dark impressions like that. As you'll find out later in this video, um, if you continue watching it, those <laughs> reed stamps uh, impressions will disappear because it ended up being a versifying clair um, or versifying clair images, okay, and that type of ink just doesn't dry on this glossy cardstock, by the way. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half quarter size page piece of glossy cardstock. Okay, so with this type of scenario right here, you know, we're going to have to go pretty bold with the imagery, so I am layering additional imagery into the scene um, using black ink. You don't always have to use this cloud in black, but with that type of background like that, we have to obscure it as much as possible, okay, if we're going to use this. I can't stamp it in a, something like a light blue because all of those, you know, that smudgy application of the um, ink in the middle there and all those reeds would just dominate um, the clouds. So I need those clouds to kind of kind of hold their own in terms of a texture on here, so thus we're stamping it out in a dark black, okay? It's a dark black Marvy um, dye-based ink, so whatever type of dye-based ink you have, you could do it with a something like a Stazon as well, something like that, okay? All right, so we've obscured a little bit of the imagery, like those reeds, with additional imagery or textures you might say in the background they don't stand out as much because they're not stamped against just a plain white piece of cardstock anymore all right so i'm going to have to go pretty heavy with my dye based inks right here okay now i didn't wait for that uh, ink to dry at all and my black pad was pretty juicy so you can see it's going on pretty blue but now it's already already kind of turning to gray because it's picking up that um, black ink okay but on this piece right here because i'm having going to have to go pretty dark on this you know we had that still that big square of uh dye based uh oh i don't know what ink it was probably a number three marvy blue or something like that i don't know it's going to have to get pretty dark all the way in there okay so i'm not worried about kind of smearing some of that black imagery because this area around the moon is going to get very dark anyway. Okay, so moving up into kind of more of a medium blue. So this is a Caribbean blue right here. You can use any type of, oh, I don't know, like a medium blue, like a cobalt or something like that if you have it. Uh, use whatever you have. I went to something, you know, quite a bit darker because I figured this scene is going to get so dark anyway. No point in kind of adding in a lot of... Um, kind of transitional blues between that very light um, initial blue and the next one. I'm just jumping right ahead and going into something, you know, pretty dark. It's not a super dark blue, but when you add it over all that gray, this Caribbean blue is looking pretty dark. Now, I'm not quite sure what I did down there on the bottom uh, right-hand corner. It's, it's almost like a resist. There's something down there um, that was smeared onto that space. Um, that's kind of resisting the ink. But here, I'm noticing, oh my gosh, that reed is kind of disappearing. So I thought, I'm wiping off those reed 
impressions with my paper towel, so when I saw that I thought, okay, I'm just going to remove all of them that way, so I'm just rubbing them out like that, and off comes the uh, ink, so I don't know, a potential new, you know, kind of technique here, you know, stamp on with your VersaFine Claire, kind of allow it to dry somewhat, and then um, just rub, you know, add some tones over it and just rub it right out. It, it acts like a resist. It's not really a resist because it was, it's more like a, oh, like a frisk or something like that. You know, it's a, well, I guess it is a resist. Um, but, you know, it's, it's an impression though. So it's an oil-based impression and here we're toning over it with a dye-based ink. The dye-based ink is staining it, so we can say that the Claire came off pretty well without leaving too much residual um, oil on it, because you can see this blue, I mean, it's, you know, it's toning in that, uh, those reed impressions, but one of the good things is I don't have to worry about those reed impressions anymore. Well, I mean, I kind of do. I still don't want to have these kind of, like, hairy kind of reverse reed impressions, but I won't have to kind of obscure them with a lot of um, darker impressions over the top of it, you know, because now they're now light, so they just kind of, they'll blend in with the background. Okay, and I'm using black, and when you start going with your darker tones, you become a lot more perimeter-oriented. Uh, on this piece right here, there's kind of a single light source with just that moon in there. So I'm adding this black right around on the perimeter like this, really darkening the four corners for the most part, okay? And kind of transition it, you know, where it looks kind of rounded like that. I think that gives the best um, vignette type of look, okay? So with the black, it's not just a big, huge kind of solid black on the corner. It kind of transitions a little bit, okay? All right, so we have that space right there. To me, it was looking like it was something, I don't know, like almost underwater or something like that, which skies can often look like, okay? All right, so now we've obscured what we had down on the surface with um, additional textures, which, was, which were images, okay, with the cloud. Um, the moon is there. And then we've obscured it more with tone, okay, so color. Now, that well, those were all transparent colors, I'm adding in some additional um, white pigment ink, which I really love for things like moons because it gives the light sources um, kind of a glowing look to them, okay? You have this kind of soft, almost powdery type of application. You really can't see it too much in there, but um, it'll come into play when I do my next application of the white pigment ink here, okay? And that is moonbeams, okay? So always kind of um, have them emanating from a single vanishing point, you know, if, it, if you have one light source, okay? And you can see that vanishing point is, you know, it's pretty much in the center of that moon. You know, you don't need to worry about like getting it down to the millimeter or anything like that, but just in general, having it go right to that. In making that moonbeam, you can see it's a little bit stronger towards the uh, source of light, and then as it moves away from the moon, I'm dissipating it or transitioning it. More ink by the light source, and then you kind of use a lighter touch of it and use less of it as it gets towards the perimeter of the page. I think that looks a lot more realistic that way. You can go for a kind of a graphic statement and have the beams just completely solid and, um, you know, the same strength from source to edge if you want to. It gives it a different look, but I like this kind of transitioning look more. Okay, now as I add this in here, one thing that um, I'll say is that uh, the white pigment inks, when you use pigment inks like this, um, they dry more transparent, okay? So as light as they look right now, they'll look darker when it dries. I don't, I don't know what happens to it in terms of the, you know, the chemistry of the ink or whatever, but um, it just, maybe the, maybe the white is more reflective when it's wet, okay? And then when it dries, it's, it doesn't have um, the moisture in it. 
So when you don't have that moisture content in there, it is um, kind of like a drier, almost like a powdered application of media on top of the surface. I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud right here. That's what I'm guessing happens. So that being said, I mean, if you add those beams in it, you know, you get it right where you want it. Um, you can always add in additional layers on the top of it. Now see, the more you kind of layers you add, the thicker the layer of white uh, ink is on there, the more opaque it will look. Okay, so see this beam right here is kind of drying darker, so I'm adding more, and then you have it, you know, kind of a transitioning beam right there, okay? Don't have all your beams the same. Have some weaker, some stronger, wider, thinner, etc. And I think it looks looks better. Have some longer than others, okay? You can see some how it kind of really fade out around the perimeter. Some are strong, you know, from source to edge. And now, what you do is you go back in, and with a light touch, you kind of add in some more uh, pigment ink. You can add some over your, some of your beams to kind of mellow it out a little bit and soften it up, but look at that. Okay, so we've obscured the background even more now, okay? So see, here's another layer of... I, these beams act as, like, imagery. They're definitely as strong or stronger than images that you'll add into your scene. So you can see them as, like, another object. They're not a stamp or anything like that, but they're definitely um, playing a major, major factor in any... Um, scene that we would do. Okay, so I'm drawing off my um, beams in here. This, These were made with the Brilliance white ink. You can use like a Hero Arts, you know, any other brand of uh, white pigment ink. It will apply on glossy cardstock without any problem. Um, if you stamp out an image, though, in uh, pigment ink, okay, it's not going to dry just like that Claire didn't dry, okay? But when you apply a thin layer like this, and especially if you spray seal it, um, it will apply just fine. Okay, so I dried that off because I want to have some embossed images around my perimeter. Okay, so I went outside. Didn't you see that happen right there? I spray sealed it. And did you see how much more vibrant those colors got? That's what spray sealing will do. It'll give it a really rich depth to your layered transparent dye-based inks and um, that's what I used right there to spray it and it also sealed off the um, all those rays in there okay all right so I don't have to worry about those rays getting embossed now okay because they're dry okay so I'm going to use some different imagery on here and uh, let's see let's do a, a count okay so I layered with the clouds and uh, the moon, although the moon didn't cover up a lot of the stuff that was going on on the pa paper, uh, we layered with um, different colors, the transparent colors, and then we've added in the light beams. So we're three layers covering our scene, okay? And now we're going to add in some additional foreground here, okay? and going with a dark ink. Now, if I wasn't going to emboss this, remember, we have to go with um, like a dye-based ink, something that'll dry, or like the Brilliance. The Brilliance inks are designed to dry on non-porous surfaces, okay? But I want these um, additional foreground images to be, one, really dark, and, you know, just to create a an additional dimension, I want them to be raised. So I'm using the VersaFine Claire here, and we'll use them in conjunction with uh, the um, detailed white embossing powder. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of watching myself stamp here. I, um, I know this is the first time I've watched myself stamp here on uh, this particular piece here, but I'm looking to see on this card. I mean... We've really eradicated that background in this scene. I mean, if you look closely, you can see those reverse images of the uh, the reeds, but by, by and large, you know, they're pretty obscured. Okay, now, the reason why I'm going for that um, embossed look, though, is because that 
further kind of um, raises the imagery from that background that I've wanted to really obscure, okay? Okay, now these types of big leafy images on glossy cardstock, you'll get kind of this, oh, they call it, um, oh, what do they call it, fish eyes sometimes when um, some of that ink doesn't apply. You have this very slick surface, very, well, not very non-porous, something like foils are much more non-porous than glossy cardstock, but sometimes, you know, with those big solid images, I have to add in and fill in some of that additional um, ink, which is no problem. You just do it with a uh, Q-tip like that or, you know, cotton swab. All right, so we have all that imagery in there, and look at that. Look how deep and uh, kind of distant we have uh, created in this piece. Okay, I'm going to use some birds right here. I felt uh, we need a little bit of a kind of a focal point. I would stamp those out in a dye-based ink, but you're just not going to stamp a dye-based ink over the clear sealant, okay? That clear acrylic sealant, you know, you're not going to be able to stain the paper because it's all sealed off right now, so I just figured, well, it's just a small image of the flock. Why don't we just uh, um, emboss it, okay? So again, uh, clear, detailed embossing powder. And what could be more fun than embossing, right? I don't use one of those anti-static bags or anything like that. I just flick it off on the back like that. <laughs> That's what I do. That's my anti-static right there. A flick with the uh, finger flick or whatever. And it's clean enough for me. I don't worry about that. You know, a few little extra specks there, you know. And plus it's clear. If I was doing something like a black on, you know, a real white piece of paper where it would really stick out, then maybe I would, you know, use an anti-static matter, employ those other types of methods, but I don't worry about it with kind of the things that I do. All right, fun with embossing. The embossing, when I do this, uh, like this, it seems like the clear gets a little bit lighter. It's not as dark, okay? Which I wish it was dark. And I've tried it in black embossing on black ink. But I like the texture of the clear a little bit more. So there you have it, okay? So you have those raised images like that. That's what it looks like at arm's distance, you know? But when you bring it up close, or if this is in kind of a darker environment, you know... Um, those raised leaves like that kind of capture a little bit of that light, which I like. Now, my desk creator is very light because I have these big kind of floods going on. I had forgotten to uh, emboss my little um, birds right in the center there. So I uh, got those in there and I'm touching the, uh, the raised leaves. And again, uh, I think it looked, I thought it looked really good without it. Okay, so we're going to format this. You know, these papers get kind of rippled when you apply that heat to it, especially with so much embossing powder on it. And I'm formatting in it now, so I've mounted it on it to a piece of um, cardstock. Oops, sorry, I'm working off screen here. Or do I zoom out? I thought I remembered to zoom out. I guess I didn't. But I'm just trimming this. I have a thin little border of white on there, like so, okay? It's very satisfying to get a nice <laughs> flat um, card again, you know, after all that ink and heat setting and embossing on there. Checking out some different colors right here for a potential kind of postcard application. I think I come to just use the dark blue cardstock. You don't find this anymore, so you, what you would do is you'd get a black um, glossy, which I think would probably look a little bit better, but I didn't have any. I had this ream of the super dark blue that I've been using for like 
30 years. <laughs> you know, when you get these reams of something at 200 sheets, um, you can, you know, you can have it for quite some time. I bought this one on pack on sale on clearance years ago. It's a chrome coat. Um, dark chrome coat. You don't see too much of that dark chrome coat. Okay, I remember to zoom out here. And I just eyeball it here. I'm not going for a folded card on this one. It could have been cool, but I'm just going for a postcard right here. So Make several swipes so you don't cut yourself. It's always that last one that kind of, you know, gets me confused. It's like, okay, I'm off of, you know, a couple little millimeters or something like that. But good enough for me. Okay, so anyways, there is the overall piece like that. Like I said, it's really glary on this uh, video here because I, you know, I have these really bright um, studio lights shining on everything. So anyways, that's the final piece right there. And, oh yeah, I do add in <laughs> Dream here, okay? It was looking a little bit um, symmetrical, so... Oh my gosh, I didn't realize that. I don't know why that's not focusing in. Hopefully it focuses in here. Come on, camera. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to have to use the Brilliance pad, okay? The Brilliance pads dry on non-porous surfaces, and they're quick-drying too, okay? They're different from other types of pigment inks, okay? Pig other pigment inks are oil-based. The Brilliance inks are quick-drying, non-porous, able, <laughs> and you can stamp them over things. And I'm not stamping them over the embossing because the embossing is raised and, you know, I wouldn't get a flat impression, so I'm stamping it in that little open space there. And I'm holding it down a little bit longer than you normally would just to allow that ink to start setting up and to transfer to the scene right there, okay? So see that dream in there? Isn't it like a nice little touch? It's, it, the piece isn't so symmetrical now, you know, too symmetrical almost. I mean, that sun isn't, or that moon isn't directly dead center or anything like that, but it's pretty close. All right, so we have that, and that dream... It's not going to be as light as it is, so it's just like those beams. It'll kind of dry um, more transparent, so it'll be darker, but I think that'll be perfect for this. Okay, so just little types of uh, little highlights in there on some of the clouds. You, this is just a white acrylic extra fine paint pen, and I'm putting some little highlights on some of these leaves, on some of the clouds. It's just a little lit texture. They call it... Um, specular light in photography. It's light that's brighter than white, so it's like a little glaring reflection off of, uh, you know, water or something like that. It's where it's light reflected. It's not white. So that, I mean, these are white here, but that's not what it represents, so. All those little touches like that, it's a, yet another layer of um, something over our surface to really obscure <laughs> kind of that foundation that we started with. So all kinds of things you can do. Scenic stamping is the most forgiving form of stamping there can ever be because you can layer colors over something. You can put something in shadows to obscure it. You can stamp something right over the top of it. You can do things like these light beams to kind of really pull attention from other things within the piece to the beams themselves. You can make things look very dimensionally, very textural, very dark, etc. So there's all kinds of things you can do if your scene kind of goes where you think it goes astray. I've never seen that happen. It's usually where when I look at a piece that someone says, oh, I messed up. They didn't mess up. They just didn't complete it. So... If you do these types of completion types of um, effects or techniques or processes, you can really come out with a really great looking design sometimes and stuff that you normally wouldn't come out with if you would planned it. Sometimes having to kind of compensate for things gives you the best techniques. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, drop me a note in the comments section.